Okay, cool. So we'll be starting. And hi, my name is Tomek, and today I will talk to you about uh, tips for marathon performance. So I'm working at Allegro, which is one of the biggest e-commerce solution in Central Europe, and we are located in Poland. And we started using marathon in fall 2013, uh, 14, and this actually is our my first pull request to marathon. Uh, when we started using it on a production with the production load. So with the couple of years, we've got some insights on the performance issue and I want to share it with you. Uh, Allegro uh, is built on the top of our big monolith and also we've got switched to microservices. Currently on our production, we have about 500 microservices and depending on the environment, we've got and 3,000 tasks running. So first thing, when we talk about performance, we should talk about metrics. Without metrics, we are blind, and we don't know what happened in our uh, cluster or in our product. So first thing is to enable metrics. In Marathon, they are not enabled by default, because we Marathon don't know where you want to store that metrics. Uh, metrics appeared in Marathon in uh, early version, 0.13. And from the beginning, it started to support uh, all major players in the market. This means uh, they were uh, supporting Graphite, Dirtadoc, uh, StatsD, and there's also a port to support Prometheus. Uh, there is a GitHub repo with a, a Prometheus adapter, because Saturn exposed the metrics in a JSON way, and Prometheus needs some different uh, schema to read the uh, metrics. So. To enable metrics, we need to add uh, something like this to our configuration. Uh, by default, metrics are gathered by uh, every 10 seconds. What does it mean? That on a big installation, metrics gathering could take about 20% of your CPU time. This is a flame graph uh, that was gathered uh, with a uh, profiling tool for Java. And if you are not familiar with flame graphs, uh, basically, here on the bottom, there is 100% of your CPU time that application is using. And uh, the stack on the flame graph is like a function call, and ev uh, each call is stuck on the another. So here is a whole stack trace of uh, metrics gathering. Because Marathon is written in Scala, uh, the flame graph does not look like fl flame. It's more like a firewall with many small fire bricks. Uh, so how we can fix this, uh, this problem with the CPU that is uh, taking to, uh, the we need to decrease the, uh, or increase the uh, metrics gathering interval. So after increasing it to 55 seconds, which is okay. I hope that will be better. Uh, so uh, after switching it to 55 seconds, which is more sensible in our infrastructure because our uh, metrics resolution in metrics store that we are using, currently it's graphite, is about one minute, we reduced the metrics gathering time to 2% of the CPU. So it is a big deal to have a sensible configuration and do not rely on default because they might not work for you. Uh, if you are interested, this part, this small block, is a Mesos native library. You should also monitor that because uh, when there are some problems with libmesos, which is a native binding for Mesos used by Marathon, uh, you could see here the increased uh, CPU time or uh, some uh, memory leaks. So you should monitor that. Uh, Marathon at the beginning uh, used uh, use the code hail uh, like a drop wizard metrics, but in 1.4 they switched to common, which is m another metrics solution for Scala that is designed for uh, applications that are written with uh, actors and more reactive way. Uh, why it's important? Because the rule of thumb is that you should know dependencies of your system. So in our case, uh, once they we change the configuration of load balancer behind uh, before our uh, graphite solution. And it turns out that we lost every second metrics. Uh, and that was be, uh, because uh, our 
the drop wizard version used in Marathon has a bug, and we need to that was fixed in the next release, even minor release, and we need to update it and deploy, and everything works. Oh, I'm sorry. My company wants to me to to be virus free. Uh, okay. Next thing, as I said, Marathon is uh, written in Java, so you should. And the rule of thumb is to monitor your dependencies, and the Java is a big deal in terms of performance. There are many talks about Java performance, and I will only show you the tip, like a slide tip, how to fix the JVM issues. First thing in JVM, when you heard about Java, you should think about garbage collection. Uh, and to monitor garbage collection in Marathon, you need to add this piece of code uh, that will create the GC log file that contains information about what happened in a garbage co uh, in garbage collection, when it happened, what it, uh, what the garbage uh, collector does, and we will, how much memory was moved, freed, and uh, everything that happened during GC time. Uh, once you got the GC log, uh, you should parse it, or if you have some experience, maybe you can see what happened just uh, looking at the uh, text version of it, but I recommend using some tools like Sensum. And Sensum uh, will print you uh, pretty nice information, what happened and what should be done in order to uh, get better performance. So like here, this is an example from our uh, Marathon instance that I take uh, in a summer. And we got an information that there is problem with too small heap and premature promotion. So the objects were created on a heap. One second, yeah, question. What was the name of the tool? Zoom. yeah. I will provide the slides and there is clickable link in here, so. Uh, uh, so uh, there is heap too small indicator, so that means you may increase the heap or change some uh, configuration about uh, promoting the uh, objects in on a heap. So, like GC is a big topic. There are dedicated conferences for it. So I will uh, leave it here. And uh, everything depends when we are talking in a heap. It depends on your usage, and it, it depends on the hardware that you can uh, provide. Uh, here are the visualization of the garbage collection times from our uh, servers. So as you can see, this is pretty big time wasted on a garbage collection and it is young GC. This means this could be stop the world situation and young uh, garbage collection uh, means that the objects from a young space in a uh, heap are moved to old space and then mm, it's generally not good thing if you move uh, objects from young space to old space and then uh, clean up them in a full GC from uh, uh, from old space. Next thing, when we are talking about Java, is Akka. Akka is a uh, actor model for uh, Scala, or I think it could be used with Java too. Uh, that is strongly influenced by Erlang. The, the inspiration is uh, so great, so the, the when you read the Akka documentation, you often get a uh, note about that, oh, this is copied from Erlang. So. When we talk about Akka, uh, there is a uh, mm, couple of uh, mm, config, change, uh, config that could be changed to get uh, some different behavior. For example, there is a throughput that is a number of messages that could be read by an actor and processed in one batch. By default, it's set for, for five, and if we set it to one, this means that each actor will be uh, spawn, mm, take one message, process it, and uh, will be released, and the next actor could proceed. So uh, to change this value, you need to add this configuration line to your Java code. In our production, we switch it to increase it four times to get 20. And it was just manual uh, detection that we see. Oh, it looks like it performed better, but uh, it, it really depends on your use case. We are heavily uh, using the events, and that might be 
our issue was uh, because the events was not dispatched in a proper time because the batches was, uh, were too small. So you can do it, but mm, check with the metrics if that really helped. Mm, third tip is the Zookeeper. Zookeeper is a state store for Marathon, mm, and it is a strong consistency key value database. So Zookeeper is a great store, but it has a problem when we try it, when you try to store too big uh, elements. So sometimes in Marathon you could get error like this. This means that when you want to deploy a really important app to a production, there is a problem with storing an object. Because in Marathon Priority 1.4, Marathon used to store the whole state of an application in one element. This means if you have uh, hundreds of applications, the node stored in a Zookeeper will have the whole state. And when you create a deploy, a uh, deploy element was uh, generated by having a previous and the new configuration. So this means if your whole state takes half of the megabytes, the deploy element will take about one megabyte. So this is pretty big. It was fixed in a 1.4. Uh, 1.4 changed the completely changed the layout of the Zookeeper data. So this should not happen. But if you get that error in uh, releases priority to 1.4. Uh, you need to do what is uh, advised here, so increase the uh, maximal node size. In our production, we have a uh, double it. And wha what's the problem? Because the changing the uh, marathon configuration is not enough. You should also uh, change the configuration of the zookeeper. Because if you, t if you take a look at the Zookeeper documentation, uh, the max buffer, which is a buffer for incoming uh, data, must be set on all servers and client. And the second thing is that you should keep in mind that the Zookeeper is designed to store data on the order of kilobytes in size. So if you are changing this element, you are probably have something wrong in your infrastructure. Uh, we did this, and what happens to us uh, was that the Zookeeper writes take more and more time because when the Zookeeper needs to negotiate the state, the bigger elements take longer to generate checksum and stuff like this. And also, they need to be uh, passed through the network. So the s smaller elements are, in generally, better. Yeah, as I said, Marathon stores a group only with references. So this looks like the better solution. But the problem with, with storing uh, only a references in a key value store is that you are creating uh, transactions in NoSQL database. What does it mean? When there is some problem with a uh, zookeeper, for example, one node could not be written to the zookeeper, you've got an outage of the whole marathon cluster. But don't worry, this also happened in a 1.312, but less often. Uh, first thing in when we are talking about Zookeeper is latency. So this is pretty easy. If the nodes are closer to each other and the network uh, latency is smaller, they perform faster and the data and the transaction happens uh, quicker. So you should keep the Zookeeper nodes as close to each other as possible remembering that they should be probably in a different uh, availability zones, just in case one zone goes off. And uh, they, could be, they should be stored on a different machines than uh, uh, Marathon and Mesos, because in other ways uh, there will be small latency between the mar uh, Marathon master and the uh, Zookeeper master that are when they are on the same machines, but they will compete on the uh, resources that uh, because they were on one machine. Uh, fourth tip is to update to at least 1.3.13. And here's a little star. I will describe what I mean later. Uh, first thing, threads. Marathon code has two places when they are configuring the thread pools that are using by Marathon. Here's first that configure uh, Scala 
uh, concurrent uh, context, the, so the actors that are used by ACCA. So here you can see there are only maximal va value is 64 threads for the whole actor pool to use. The second thing is the number of threads for uh, for I/O operation, and it's set to 100. So a little bit of math: 64 plus 100 means that Marathon could spawn up to 2,000 threads. Uh, why does it happen? Uh, oh, in fact, it's a big O notation from the number of tasks. Uh, why does it happen? Because when you have an actor and you call a blocking request in that actor, ACCA will spawn a new thread for you. And it cannot be configured to, to behave differently because that's how the actor model is designed to not block at any time. Uh, well, I advise you to update to 1.3.13 uh, with a star because there is a patch uh, that is uh, no, it's not that patch. I think the 1.3.7 was patched. So when you deploy it, you will get a, this is the before we deploy uh, 1.3.7 and here's after. So we still get um, more uh, threads than configured because in my point is uh, nearly 200 uh, threads, but we are not killing our machines with uh, thousands of threads. Um, next thing, uh, there is something called no knob optimization. So the fastest code you can possibly write is no code at all. And we can rephrase it so the no optimization is the fastest operation you can possibly perform is no operation at all. So what does it mean? There are health checks. Health checks in Marathon were introduced from early beginning. And in the beginning, they were performed by a single Marathon instance. And it was working for us until some time. Why? Because the single Marathon instance was querying for every task it has to detect if it's healthy, like this, or unhealthy. And store this value and present them uh, to a user in a nice UI. But what happened when we scale? There is no way to perform health checks from a single instance without taking uh, uh, timeouts or uh, getting some other issues. Uh, when I said that we should not perform operation at all, this means that we can move the operation we want to do to some other. So, uh, so in this case, we could ask Mesos to perform health checks for Marathon. Uh, the tasks are not running in a void. They are grouped by a Mesos agent. And every task is running by an executor that could perform health checks for us. So when executor perform a health checks, uh, it detects if the task is healthy and inform Marathon about this. So the, when, when Marathon get notification only when the health check state change and uh, task is killed, not by Marathon, but by the health checks. There will be probes in a, probably I think the Mesos 1.4. Um, there's currently not support by Marathon, but I think they will be supported in 1.5, uh, 1.6. Uh, so uh, if you read the uh, Gaston Kleeman blog post, he did a mm, test, so it turns out that single marathon instance, mm, he didn't say what instance he spawned, uh, could uh, handle up to nearly 4,000 tasks uh, with TCP health checks and up to 2,000 tasks in uh, HTTP health checks. And we were hit by this. We've got over 2,000 tasks on our production cluster and tasks get randomly killed by marathon because uh, the health checks timeouts uh, so what we did, we just uh, ported uh, mar Marathon health checks from 1.4 to 1.3, which we are using, and switched every task to Mesos health checks. And uh, this solved the problem with the task killed, even if they are healthy, and also helped us with the um, Marathon uh, issues. Uh, here is a comparison because we've got a Marathon 1.3.10 and we've got a problem with health checks. So we see that 1.4 introduces uh, Mesos health checks, Mesos native health checks, 
but after upgrading, the, it was not working for us. So the, there was constantly timeouts, uh, people cannot deploy anything, and then we decide to uh, port Mesos health checks from 1.4 to 1.3.10, and everything get uh, more stable even than before, and the health checks start passing again. Um, what you see here is a problem that was in that started in a marathon 1.4. There was an issue for this, and finally it gets resolved in 1.4.7. Uh, actually, we haven't still updated yet because we started on a different topics. I will cover uh, later. Uh, five tip is to do not use uh, an event bus for marathon. Marathon provides two ways of getting notification from uh, Marathon. Uh, so there you can subscribe for a callback. So Marathon will send you a post with an uh, event in JSON. And this is the deprecated format. But the problem with this was that it sends every event. And even that some events are pretty big, like over 10 megabytes. Uh, it's deprecated and there is some weird policy of retrying and it was totally resource consuming. So I don't, uh, you should not use the callbacks. Instead you, su you should use uh, server sent events, uh, which is uh, working in a quite opposite way. So Marathon is no longer sending an events to a client, but you are connecting to a Marathon with a persistent connection and Marathon is sending the data on one connection to one client. Uh, what's more, Marathon uh, support event filtering from 1.3.7, and this means that you can filter out the big events so your application do not to filter them on, the, on their side. Uh, these are the metrics from our solution uh, to register tasks in mar uh, from Marathon into a console called Marathon Console. It's fork of a Cisco Cloud Marathon Console. And we used to have a, a, co a configuration that relies on a callbacks. And with callbacks, we've got a, uh, seven minutes of delay between a timestamp that was stored in an event and a timestamp uh, the, and the time on a machine when the event was received. So in our case, this means like a huge outage because the application was spawned in uh, seven minutes and killed. And the, for the seven minutes, our state in our config, uh, config service discovery solution console uh, was totally invalid. So after switch to a server sent event with filtering, uh, we reduced our um, delay to less than 30 seconds. So typically about milliseconds. Uh, but still, this means that sometimes we have invalid state in a configuration service, and this probably is not the best way of registering uh, in a distributed world. Uh, another thing I mentioned before that uh, some events has, uh, are pretty big, like over 10 megabytes. Uh, usually they are the deployments event. And there is a pull request. I think it's, yeah, it's from today. So it's still open uh, that we that will uh, introduce lightweight uh, SSA flags, so the events will be uh, smaller without the uh, unnecessary information about what uh, have been deployed or stuff like this. Um, sixth tip is using a custom executor. I will talk about it more tomorrow. Uh, why I think it's important? Uh, because when you see that we've got a, a five milliseconds delay between uh, event that the application is created and actually registering it in a console. This means that the application is created or killed. This means, uh, and with executor, we can register our application in a configuration uh, service discovery solution uh, when it starts to be healthy, for example, because executor is an actual thing that is um, taking care of a whole application or uh, instance lifecycle. And this is the way how the Aurora works, for example. Uh, seventh tip is to prefer budget deployments 
instead of uh, many single ones. When you create a budget deployment, this means that the, uh, uh, you, you, you each of, our, of your users create a uh, request to a Marathon and deploy one application. Marathon don't like uh, many deployments at once because it means every, each, every deployment needs to be stored in the Zookeeper and this increases the Zookeeper usage. Uh, so we can use a facade that will gather the deployments into bigger ones and deploy them uh, in a batch. This is something that we haven't introduced, but we were considering. Instead of this, we start sharding our Marathon installation. That's why the everything I showed you uh, does not, uh, I, I don't, do not test the latest Marathon version because right now we have uh, sharded Marathon, so the load of each instance is, is lower than we have before, and how, it's, uh, how, how it looks. So we just got a facade before Marathon, and uh, in that facade we are taking care of authentication and authorization users to deploy something to Marathon. So in fact this is the better solution than plugins, because plugins work in a single thread and uh, need to check for every, for example, when a user wants to query Marathon to see all instances, the plugin need to ask if, he, if that particular user have an, um, uh, is authorized to see that application. So with thousands of applications, this starts to be a problem. And when there is a sharding, we just keep the simple facade and without user noticing it, we are moving its instances between different Marathon installation using consistent hashing of uh, application name. So that will be all. Here's a summary of what we should do. So just enable metrics to see what happened. Tune JVM and remember to tune JVM also for a Zookeeper We're using the same tools like you use for Marathon. Remember that the Zookeeper is, has pretty different uh, responsibilities and works in a different way, so they need a special care. Um, uh, update Marathon to 1.13 and use Mesos health checks if you can. So the best what you can do right now is to use Marathon 1.4.7 or 1.5, but I haven't used it and can't really recommend it. Uh, do not use the event pass. Instead of use an executor that will take care of, uh, take care of uh, application lifecycle. Mm, prefer batching when talking to Marathon and, and shard it if you need it if you take a hit the wall, uh, hit the roof, and uh, Marathon is no longer uh, working for you. So think about sharding. So that's all, and if you have any question, I'll be happy to answer. So we are not no longer using Marathon UI. So we are using it for a debug purpose. Marathon UI is no longer supported by Mesosphere and there are no commits on their side. And th th there, were, there was some movement to update the Marathon UI, but the initiative died. So we have our custom solution here, uh, where it's, it's called App Engine. And when the user can uh, see uh, it's his whole application, their state, uh, databases that he's using, uh, <laughs> configure load balancer, mm, uh, caches, and stuff like this. So, yep, the, the, the problem is that uh, in our case, this facade also take, uh, prepare an API, so the UI is pretty simple. We just ask the facade and all magic, and uh, routing is done uh, here. Okay, so I think there are no more questions. So, thank you. If you have any more, qu if you got any question, I will be here today and tomorrow, and uh, even on the town hall. So, thank you.